uh, Dr. L. Hanmantaya. He is not present. Uh, Dr. Jawar Sarkarji. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, I fully support the bill brought forward by Professor Manoj Jha. Uh, and I would humbly like to point out at just a couple of small things. Number one, Section 5 of the proposed bill includes provisions taken from the United Nations and uh, the fact of health is expanded to cover the right to food, which we have already brought in to a large extent, the right to food, right to water, sanitation, etc., but does not include a subtle mention made therein in the United Nations on gender as well. So we may like to examine it at the right appropriate occasion to see whether the economic, cultural rights and social rights that includes gender as a part of the right to health is also included. Now, India <coughs> has a lot of firsts among many countries. There is no denial about that. But India also stands out like a sore thumb where certain expenditures are concerned. The expenditure on health, for instance, is pegged at 1 to 1.5 percent of the GDP, which remains an international shame. It is not that expenditure is not being done. It is a question of aggregating it. It's a question of pinpointing it. I have enough faith in a nation that could eradicate polio, that could help the world in eradicating child, uh, the smallpox, and now has gone in for a massive venture to give free vaccines. The nation that could do so much, my humble submission to you, to the introducer of the bill and to the health minister and others, is to take an overview, an overview of what we are doing. We are doing it on separate tracks. We are doing Swaj Bharat on the one hand, we are doing Jahargat Jal, we are doing health on the other hand. Can we collate all of them together as a fundamental right to health? Because it is health ultimately that would matter where all rights are concerned. If the man cannot, the woman cannot exist, if he cannot exist in a healthy life, then what's the point of showering so many benefits on him? So my submission would be to take an overview of the way the nation is progressing, not to quibble between the right of the states, the duties of the states, and the duty of the center. The duties of the center and states are quibbled around. Even in my morning question, they quibbled around and said, it is for the states to do it. Let us take, this is a national body, let us take a national view of the whole thing, let us set up targets, and when I say let us, I don't mean the government of the day only. The government of the day should take into cognizance, should take the advice of senior specialists on the other side who are equally concerned about this nation. So therefore, I plead to the government and to the House to consider this bill most favorably. There are small, uh, one, a couple of small things here and there. And incidentally, we passed a bill recently, two days ago, on the ground that we have an international obligation to fall in line with dangerous with that, uh, weapons of mass destruction. We have an international obligation also to ensure right to health. Not one. We have a series of obligations put together. So I would submit to the government to treat this as a government-supported bill and not only that, not just pass a bill, but to also make a plan of action for the next five years with the cooperation of all sides of the House, with the goodwill of the people of India and the track record of India as a whole, I am sure we would be able to tackle this menace and to provide a healthy life to every Indian who is born. After all, we are now reaching the status of the world's largest nation. We owe it to them. We owe it to make it a demographic dividend and not to live as a demographic disaster. 
with these words i support mr manoj sir's bill and thank you for your time thank you honorable member uh, after this we have honorable shri lahar singh siroya see here not present um honorable radha mohan das ji agarwal माननीय उपसभापति महोदया 